Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode for Hand of Fate. This is a... Well, there's some kind of unique things to this game where you're building decks for your character to determine what your character gets and what your character faces in battle. So the easiest way to explain this is just to jump in. Back so soon. I knew you would not falter. Okay, so I've played a little bit of this this uh, story mode. The whole goal is to defeat 12 bosses before you can fight this person here. At least that's what this person is saying. So Another let's jump into a dungeon. And our game truly begins. Alright, story mode. These are the bosses that I have already defeated. This is a tutorial and this was a very first level boss. This is the next boss we're going to have to defeat. So we have to pick the Queen of Dust. Uh, in combat, the player's movement speed is reduced by how much gold they possess. So I guess if we have a lot of money, then we just move slower while fighting her, maybe? And then you can look at the lore of the bandit or Queen of Dust. The Bandit Queen was taken by slavers as a child and raised in the desert. Over the years, she has bribed and murdered her way to her current position as second in command of the Desert Thieves. So that's kind of cool. So we're going to choose this boss because we have no other Bold cho woman, choices. This one. She did not collapse when the Empire did. No, she took up arms, organized her people, and vowed that in a country where death had gathered, she would be the one dealing it. And this guy has something to say about almost everything, which is pretty cool, because it's it's really unique. And, okay, so let's go to the deck builder. So this is a big part of the game. It's going to ask if you would like to use a recommended equipment and encounter deck. I'm going to say no, just so I can show it off. So this is our equipment deck. We don't get these at the start of the game, but we have a chance of getting what is in this deck as this dungeon progresses. So these are the items that we can put into the deck. We need at least 14, as you can see in the bottom middle there. And you kind of want to get rid of generic stuff like a basic shield or... Really, there's actually not too much bad things. Um, basic sword or axe. So we're going to throw this frost fang, which is a weapon that I got in my last dungeon. I don't even know what this does. Its contents are unknown. Find this card during play and its secrets will be revealed. Alright, so we're going to add this to the deck. We're going to look at our shield options. You can see the categories up there on the top. Uh, we only have basic shields. I will leave these in the deck. Magic item. Uh, let's see. Angel's Wings. I don't think we know what this does. Because I just found it. Yeah. Alright, so let's add that to the deck. So now we have 14 of 14. Artifacts are kind of like magical spells you can use during battles. I'm going to remove that, remove the healing cap so I can find out what this and this does, potentially, if we draw it. I'm going to remove that. This is a spell that throws knives around your character. Consuming Shame. Mercenary Contract allows you to generate more gold when you hit people, but I know what that does, so let's see what Time Heals does. And I think that's it. So that's going to be our deck for this dungeon, and then we build our encounter deck. So these are the cards we're going to encounter on our journey. We have to have the Queen of Dust, we have to have the goblins that are locked in there, as well as a bandit attack, and all of Some these. Some cards are locked and cannot be removed from your deck. So, something to look, f look for with these cards. At the bottom of each card you're going to see a symbol. If you conquer whatever challenge that card presents, you get a bonus card at the end of the dungeon to add to your future decks. So I try to pick those as much as possible. We're going to go with a helpful priest. We can get two more, so I'm going to do treasure chest. And... I've never fought at a river. We can also take away this ambush. Dead King's Hall, Devil's Choice, that. And I guess we just add these other ones that give us tokens. So in my previous dungeon run, this Devil's Choice had a token in it, so apparently you can only earn one token from each card each time. I did not know that, and we need to add one more. Let's add... Uh, I don't like the Maze of Traps. Dead Man's Gorge. This is a location where we would be possibly ambushed or fight at. Alright, so that's going to be our encounter deck. And then we are going to hit back. And we're going to start this dungeon. Now well, I, I call it a dungeon. Cup. The first of my symbols. 
So these are cards that the person here is adding to the deck to try and spice it up, as he has said before. I love the way that this animation goes. It's really cool. I've added some cards to spice up the game. <laughs> In All right, addition so to the pain and gain decks, there are now blessings and curses. Choose your steps carefully. So gains are kind of treasures. Pains are not good for us. We're going to open up the character screen. There's our character. You start out with the basic equipment every single dungeon. Even if you come out of the last dungeon with awesome stuff. You're going to be equipped with this basic basic stuff. Alright, so now we have the blessings and curses. So this is the curse that we got. The money bags. Uh, this is new to me. So apparently we can have up to three of them, it looks like. We have helm, shields, artifacts, trinkets, gloves, and then our weapons. Uh, down in the bottom, you're going to see health, food, and gold. Each card you move to is basically like another room or another encounter. Takes at least one food. You will encounter shops, which will require gold to purchase new items for your deck. And then health is kind of self-explanatory. As you move around, you do regenerate hit points. And I think that's it. So let's do this. Mr. Lionel. First encounter. Whilst enjoying your evening meal at a local tavern, a strange old man takes the seat next to yours. He taps your shoulder quite painfully with his wooden staff to get your attention, and you notice that he appears to be a goblin, poorly disguised as a human. His wizened face grins at you with a hint of madness. My name is Mr. Lionel. If you can Lionel, if you give me what I need, boy, I will conjure up your heart's desire with this wizarding wand of my own creation. So, I've actually encountered this person before, and if you ask him what he needs, he's going to give you a free shield. Need? I need to help you. Mr. Lionel taps the staff on the ground, and a shield materializes at your feet. There you go, old bean. He smiles a warm grin that reveals all his chipped and yellow teeth. Your face reminds me of my son. I haven't met you before, have I? And there we go, we got a shield. Now a shield you can counter opponents, if your timing is right. Yes, so this allows us to... as person said counter opponents or reflect projectiles because of its traits there and it's automatically equipped to our shield slot then before you can stop him with inhuman speed he snatches a picked pickled onion off your plate and sprints out the tavern door there we go first challenge beaten conquered whatever let's go up ah helpful priests priests gods and eternal damnations i have no track with any of it what do you do? We play for a token now. So here we go. If I conquer this, I'm going to get access to that token at the end of the dungeon. You meet a wandering priest who greets you in a friendly manner. For a small share of your provisions, I will bless you in the name of the old gods. Give the priest half of your food. Okay, I do want the token. So you can either have a success or a huge success. A choice. Select your desire. No real way of knowing what is what. I'm going to go with this for huge success. Ah, Just a success. Alright, he says a few words in the language of the old religion and gently touches your forehead. It is done. Draw a one blessing card. This card token is not yours. Blessings right. will remain always active and are never removed. When Unless the player... you die, of course. No, we don't want Then to you're die. back where you began, as always. When the player chooses from multiple equipment or gain cards, the choices available are increased by one. Okay. Well done. And then we also got the token for overcoming that challenge, I guess, which you can't really lose. Let's see what the tokens do at the end. So now we're down to three food. It's better than trudging along a muddy road. Certainly. I don't know what this does. You found a friendly trader willing to let you ride on his wagon. You discovered the exit to this area. There's still one more card to discover, but... Uh, oh, it could be a shot, too. Ah, we'll hitch a ride down to the next floor. Not far out of town, you come under attack. The dealer draws you two monster cards. So these are going to be brigands. You can tell because it's the dust. Specifically, dust is always brigands. And now we see some of the third-person combat. So it's going to summon these monsters back there. It's giving me all my equipment. You can skip this if you wish. And the combat is kind of like if you play Batman, Arkham Asylum, or any of those games. It's a little bit like that. There's a counter system, and oh my goodness, there's apparently a trap right there. Oop. I'm gonna shield bash. I'm gonna counter. Counter. 
little sluggish combat. Uh, just got injured. And bandits are not particularly difficult. They're the very first enemy you come across. Counter? Oh, dang it. All right, come back here, you two. There we go. We've defeated that encounter. Now we go back to this. All right, and we got a gain card. 30 gold. I'm sure you're grateful for that. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty grateful this for that. This game is still only beginning. New rules, new tools, new abilities. We have far to go as yet. Okay. Only two food left. Ooh, a traveling healer. Okay, so this is going to be a shop. In a shady grove off a beaten trail, you find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Let's approach the shop. Greetings, wise traveler. I have much to offer you. So now we are going to see the shop, or a shop. There are multiple uh, kinds of shops. We're going to skip this animation. Okay, so we can heal our wounds. We can remove curses, sell items, or buy food. We really need to buy some food here. Most important thing. How long, or how much does it take to remove a curse? 400 gold! Alright! Not gonna do that. In fact, we're just gonna... Oh, we can't afford that. We're gonna buy more food. Okay. And I don't think I have anything to sell. Shield. Wait a minute, isn't that the shield that I have? Like, equipped? Hold on. Inventory. Yeah, that's the only shield I have. I, I don't want to sell that. So let's leave the shop. Still, we needed the food, so it was very good that we found that place. I'm not sure what happens when your food runs out. I'm assuming you lose hit points. Goblins. Goblins. I do love goblins. Truly, I haven't seen their like in years. Excellent. One night, you awaken to find your belongings being rifled through by goblins. As soon as they notice you stirring, they run away with your shield, those bastards. Uh, they have also stolen some of your food and gold. We must kill them. Three of them, apparently. As you rise to your feet to retrieve your belongings, you realize that it's not only goblins stirring in this forest. The dealer also draws a monster card. Things thicken. Hmm, no, that's not the right saying. The plot thickens is the saying I'm thinking of. Not just things thicken. That's just silly. Oh, this place again. Oh, wait, wait. My sh they took my shield? I'm just gonna slice, slice, slice. So now I cannot counter. Oh! Get shot. Dodge through. So that's the person who has my shield over there. I don't know if we have like a time limit. Give me back my shield. I'm assuming they can eventually get away. Uh, something that I do not like about this game. A lot of things I like, but something that I don't know. Oh, that's apparently another trap. Oh, sh Is that you can't control the camera angle. Oh, I see. So they're opening portals to leave. Okay, but I managed to kill them all. Yeah, you're not going to take all my stuff. With the goblin threat dealt with, you continue on your way. Alright, so we got our items back. Good. Twisted Canyon. You see a weapon glinting in the sunlight, lying next to a skeleton at the bottom of the canyon. I'm going to try and climb down and retrieve this weapon. We have one chance of failure. Wish me luck. I'm gonna go with you. Yeah! Success! Very carefully, you make your way to the bottom of the canyon. So this is going to give us an equipment card. Oh, weapon card specifically, sorry. 
And we drew a sword. Not our best weapon in our equipment deck that we chose, but it is better than the rusty axe, so I will as equip it. As pleases you. Ah, okay, so we get a chance to get Running a token. Running water protects against many things in myth. Generally, though, it's just a pain to get past. Ooh, okay, attempt to cross the river. Huge success, one chance of failure. Oh, yeah! Your light armor makes the crossing easy, and you even stop to die for some shiny stones on the riverbed that you may fetch a few coins. Or that may fetch a few coins. The dealer draws you one gold gain card. 15? I've seen 25 as the max so far. Once on the other side of the river, you realize that one of the stones is in fact a ring. You put it away to have it cleaned and identified later, then continue your journey. This card's token is now yours, which will go into our little dish. Very good. Awesome. That was pretty good. Let's continue. To the stairs. Were you hoping this was the end? No. Another floor awaits. You embark upon the next leg of your journey. Or adventure. You are close on her trail, and more confident than I had imagined. Perhaps you will play beyond this mark, and we will see your true metal. So just in case you were wondering, you cannot change, as far as I've seen, let me just check the menus real quick. Yeah, you can reset your progress. Um, well, I might as well look and see what language this is in. I don't even know what that language is. Um, but you cannot change your character. It's always going to be the same person. They even have a little, the little gold statue down there as a representation of your person. So unfortunately, that's it's kind of a drawback. I do like to customize characters and at least have the option for male and female. But uh, you're going to be stuck with this one person again, as far as I can tell. Let's move on over here. Rockfall. A terrifying walk to get to the queen. That doesn't sound so good. So many potential places for an assailant to get the upper hand. What does this do? While journeying near the coast, you hear a rumble overhead. Falling rocks force you to take cover. We only have one choice. Oh my gosh. I was trying to follow the cards. I'm not sure if it really works that way, but I think this is the success or the huge failure. You slip and stumble into the path of the rock fall. The dealer draws you two pain cards. Lose five maximum health. Lose five maximum health. We're down to 90. Ouch. Oh, oh god. More pain card? What? It said draw two pain cards. I was four. What is this? Okay. That was terrible for us. Treasure chest. A treasure chest? What more iconic emblem of success could we imagine? While exploring a dungeon, you see a treasure chest at the end of the hall. The chest may hold great wealth, but the chamber may be trapped. Let's attempt this. Two failures, two successes. Oh, whew, all right. The hall is silent as you move forward. You approach the treasure chest. Again, a token is at stake. The treasure chest looks battered, but still intact. What treasure might it hold? Attempt to pry it open. Oh, geez. Okay. Three chances of success. Not sure where that failure went. Oh! <laughs> Shoot. The treasure chest stubbornly refuses to give way to your attempts. You leave disappointed. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Again, the stones tumble upon you. Oh, no. Choose from these options. Shit. One pain card. More health gone. Just when you think it's over, you are knocked unconscious by a large rock striking your unprotected head. Ah, uh, because I have no helmets. Two more pain cards. Five gold is alright. No, not my food. We are getting rocked by the this provisions floor. are running low. Can you press on? Noble causes turn to rotten enterprise. Alright, well. We win this battle and send the queen to her rightful end. Yet, 
What have you gained in the process? We did not get anything from our equipment this this round. Uh, the Desert Queen is more lethal in battle and harder to kill than a regular bandit. Excuse me. Her blades are sharp and she is frequently protected by powerful crossbow. As you plunder the secrets of your memories, you'll gain new cards. Some you'll wish you'd left untouched. Alright. Time for the boss battle. Starting with a maximum of 85 hit points. And apparently two minions. Oh, jeez. Alright, the red ones, you cannot dodge. Or counter. Oh, I mean, sorry, you can't counter, you can't dodge. Uh, gotta dodge that. Oh, I gotta dodge that. Uh, the little icon above my head is when the um, crossbow is firing. I can deflect it. Like that. Cannot dodge. Ooh. Shoot. Oh, actually, I could have countered that one. I don't know if you can destroy this or not. There it is! I guess we have to destroy this, or else the encounter would be over. Alright. Boom! Defeated! She was the first boss that's actually kind of tough. Inevitable, I suppose. So often those who beat plowshare to sword die by the grim instruments of their industry. Still, she fought well and bravely. Sure. Which is all I expect from my pawns and players. All right, the goblet. I've never seen this before. Stronger counterattacks. I guess that's upgraded. Increased stun. Your stunning attacks now render enemies' days for longer. New starting gear. Okay. Bandit strength increased. Skeleton strength and bandit throwing knives. So the enemies get increased, but we also get upgraded. So I guess you get a nice reward at the end of each of these tiers. Okay. Cool. You have earned the first of the symbols of my power and passed the first gate. There is no turning back now. Previously, I was merciful, but now I cannot be. It is begun. I crafted each of these cards over the course of years. You have taken them from me in mere moments. <laughs> Alright, so these are the tokens that we earned, and now we unlock new cards for our decks. A healer's ring. And a new encounter, charity, okay. For diving into the river, you receive the Ring of Survival to add to future equipment decks. Again, we don't automatically get these. We have to find them. There's our new boss, Jack of Plague. Ember Town Hero. Devil's Carnival. Asleep in the Forest. All new encounter cards. For defeating the Bandit Queen, we receive Fleet Cuffs. Armor of cold and a huge hammer okay all right come play again and then this is what happens when you are between rounds and i think this is just a very cool animation you just kind of sit here and watch it but that's going to do it for the first episode i will continue this um i guess tomorrow and hope you look forward to more because this game is pretty cool the the combat's a little sluggish but it's just the whole package together i think is really neat and unique especially so i'm, I'm definitely looking forward to completing this story mode and defeating all 12 of this person's champions or at least acquiring all of the 
as simple as I guess. Uh, but anyway, I will see you all next time. Take care. That's such a cool animation. I just look at all those cards. They're so cool.